Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Rulim Vasilev, and I'm the new community manager for Valero. Um, today is March 15th, and uh, Jonas asked me to take over this session because he's not feeling well today. So please bear with me. Uh, this is my first Valero community meeting. Uh, with that said, please follow the code of conduct. Just, in other words, behave and be nice to the other people. Um, with that, uh, I've shared the link to the uh, Hack and D uh, for the community meetings um, notes for today. Please fill yourself in. Feel, uh, feel free to <clears throat> add all the status updates, announcements, and discussion topics that you want to have for today. Um, with that, I'm, from my side, since I'm new in the, into the project, I don't have much to share right now. So I'll give the mic to, um, I can see discussion topic. So I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. Uh, Hong, please take the mic and, and start with the your topic, please. Yeah, I just, um, uh, you can call me Fong. <laughs> Uh, if you really want to go by the Vietnamese uh, pronunciation, it's you can say it's get poo. But either way, it's fine with me. Uh, I've been, uh, yeah, I've been uh, a long-term uh, member of this team for <laughs> quite a few years. Anyway, uh, I just want to give a quick update for the um, the issues number nine three nine nine three, which is the um, priority class is not included in a backup if the pod is referred to it. And this become uh, an issue for us when we restore to a new cluster that doesn't have that same priority class. So I create a fix for that. And uh, I also put the PR in a meeting note, uh, even though uh, the, the PR still have, still need some work on it because I forgot to put the chain log, I forgot to sign off and so on and so forth. I have to work on it a little bit. But uh, if you, um, you, you guys can uh, take a look at it to, to, to see what's going on, uh, you guys can uh, look at it. Uh, the chain is uh, very simple. I simply add the uh, priority class name. Uh, if if, it, if the priority class name is specified, then I just simply add that object into the additional items uh, array during the uh, pod action, uh, either in backup or restore. Uh, so it's very simple, straightforward, uh, very easy to uh, review. Uh, I think I might add a few more uh, unit tests into uh, in, into this case, so to kind of um, Make it uh, make sure that it, it got tested uh, properly. I also already did some integration tests with my setup. That I means in way when I um, when I run the backup uh, with the high uh, with the priority class um, specified in the pod name, it was able the I can see that in the backup image uh, the priority class was backup. Then I go ahead and delete the higher uh, the, the priority class for my cluster and I restore the um, uh, restore the, the, the namespace and I saw that the uh, priority class in the cluster scope also got re recovered. So it uh, integration test is done so you guys can take a look at it. That's it for me. Thank you. Uh, anyone wants to comment on this one? Any discussion? Topics. I'll note that I have some announcements that I got in late, so we can tie off the discussion topics, and then I have some announcements. All right. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to um, mention that I've got the uh, item snapshot or comments um, in the update progress comment, uh, the, the update progress PR. Um, I addressed all the review comments, so it's on Daniel now to um, kick it in. Thank you so much, by the way, Dave. That is very helpful. <laughs> I just saw that comment. I'm very happy about that. With that, Eleanor, I think you're the next one with the, a lot of topics to turn out. 
Great. And as you can tell, a kind of a common theme, partly from Dave's work with the item snapshotter and just we're doing a lot of planning and kind of pulling things together, really designing and such for um, for one nine and, and the future. So three things. One, um, for folks who were on the call last week, you know that uh, some of the Valera team members have been doing research in Copia as a potential replacement for Rustic. That document that's linked has that comparison. Next week's meeting, when we have the Beijing team members, we're gonna be really discussing, and I'm hoping that we can I mean, our, our inclination is to replace Copia, but of course we want to replace Rustic with Copia, but of course we want the bigger communities, the wider communities feedback. So please, please come next week if you have feedback on that, thoughts on that. And obviously the longer, the more you can look at this doc ahead of time, ask questions as needed, the, the better discussion it'll be. Um, so that's the first thing, Copia and Rustic. And if you don't have access to the doc, if you have questions, uh, pound Valero dash dev is a great place to ask. Secondly, our second kind of design thing we're working on is, is as you've heard by now, I think uh, we are hoping to put a data mover feature in Valero. Um, I'm working to kind of create a PRD because we're hearing uh, Red Hat has, has suggested some requirements, which I think will work. Um, we know that uh, the vSphere team may have requirements, so we're going to be chatting with them. Anyone else who might have requirements or opinions on well, if you have requirements for the data mover feature, for sure be in contact with me. If you have thoughts on the architecture of the, the implementation of that data mover feature, um, definitely please kind of keep watching. We're designing this now. The community meeting next week would be a good time if you have specific thoughts on that. And last announcement, um, multi-tenancy might actually be designed during 1.9. We've got some folks uh, who might be interested in doing that. So. Um, just this is a, again a heads up and uh, so we are looking into that a bit and so again if you have thoughts on that uh, we can potentially discuss it now I see some of the folks here who have been thinking about multi tenancy but um, certainly next week also is a great time in the community meeting so. Hey Eleanor um, I wanted to just mention from our end um, we've actually been like <clears throat> prototyping something about data mover for a few months at this point um, well it, it's something we've actually been thinking about for almost a year and a half. We have a like a very bare bones design that we've tried to pull from our prototype to be something that could be generic for Valero. And we're actually hoping like submit that this week to start getting people's eyes on it. I don't know, Great. that doesn't necessarily mean it, it's like the, remotely at all the final solution, um, but we're hoping to get that submitted and then we can kind of go back with what our product requirements were and what that design entails. Um, but I just want to mention that if folks want to be on the lookout for that, we're at least going to submit it up there. It obviously needs a lot of feedback and a lot of iteration. Um, but I think we're only like a couple of days away from getting that submitted. So, did you look at the the data mover in the vSphere plugin? Uh, I have some surface level knowledge of it. <clears throat> um, there might be there's another folk on my team. I actually, don't see him on here that looked into that um, just to get a better understanding as to what I think the original goal right was. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but was it potentially taking the vSphere data mover out of the plugin and putting it into Astrolabe? Was that what the goal? Um, well, moving it up into Valero and okay. taking the Astrolabe layer and you know getting more use out of it. Yeah. And um, could you just give me a little color around what exactly would the vSphere data mover support um, in terms of was it going to be like a generic all storage providers or is it only targeting vSphere volumes? So right now the the data mover, the vSphere data mover sits on top of Astrolabe. Okay. So as we add more Astrolabe support, the data mover would pick it up pretty much automatically. I mean, there's some tweaks in there because there's some um, vSphereisms that crept in, but those should be um, things we could take out. So it was designed as like a, a scale out solution. And um, there's a POC for a Copia repo. So there's a S3 repo that's built into Astrolabe currently, which is just a really stupid one. So it puts things into very simple objects. Um, there's a POC that I did for replacing that repository with one based on Copia. Hmm. And then um, it's pretty much a drop in replacement for the existing one. And we can also drop in other repositories. So, you know, potentially Veeam wants to drop in like the VBR backend. Or you know we could drop in um, the Dell EMC backend, so kind of like how we currently have like object store plugins in uh, in Valero. That's that's cool. Um, <clears throat> interestingly, so um, 
th there's engineers that um, they're not associated with our team that um, developed like a totally upstream project called Volsync, which um, is really about replicating volumes across clusters. Mm -hmm. um, and they prototyped a couple of data mover solutions, one of them actually being Rustic um, as the solution for it. So um, in the same vein, it's just using um, an S3 repo as its backup storage target and um, essentially replicating a snapshot into object storage. So that was what our first like proof of concept with this, uh, how this worked. And they also have our sync data mover. Um, I could see Copia data mover also being something they, they're probably exploring. But the main goal of ours being that we don't want to lock in a specific data mover solution. Um, like there's third party backup vendors that obviously already have their own data mover. They may want to bring their own into an existing API that Valero offers. Um, so that was how we kind of reworked what our prototype was, which was very Volsync centric to be, how do we just support any data mover, right? How does someone bring their own data mover into the solution? So um, it sounds like you've got, you know, some experience here. We'd love to hear your feedback on kind of what we came up with. Um, yeah, so that was like the the design for the vSphere data mover was to be, was to have it replaceable. And there's basically, there's a CRD API to the data mover telling it to do something. Cool, okay. Yeah, I, I need to um, learn more about that myself personally, so, um, but, Shoe bomb on our team did dig into this a little bit. I don't think he's on right now, but I'll have to stick up with him and see what he learned. Is there, uh, I think the question that I would have is, is there, um, sounds like to me like we're adding an extra layer with Astrolabe. Uh, is there any reason to add that extra layer that I'm not aware of versus like adding a purely Valero API? So, contract? Like plugin um, contract for data movement? So, the goal with Astrolabe was to handle things other than volumes. So the existing implementation handles volumes, but you can plug in other things there. And, you know, like the, the, the constant example has been like the Postgres database. So say you have a Postgres database and you want to use PG dump instead of doing a volume snapshot. That plugs right into Astrolabe and it plugs right into the existing repo and the existing data mover. So if you have something that can provide a data source we can move it from place to place um, on top of the Astrolabe APIs. So that was the reason for having the Astrolabe APIs are a foundation for the data mover. So data movement is, you know, managing it, making sure you're doing it in the right order, um, you know, load balancing. Um, whereas, you know, there's APIs for simply extracting data and snapshotting data. I have another question in a slightly different direction, but I want to pause to see if Sean, did that answer your question or do you want to talk more on this topic? It, it, so if I can restate it, Dave, just to sure. make sure I'm rocking. Um, you're saying that Astrolabe's intention was to be like a container notifier type of system where you could say like, do these actions and now you have the snapshot not necessarily just a data movement, but then after you did those things, you could then move data with Astrolabe. Right. That, so you so you okay. can use the Astrolabe APIs to extract data and push data into things. Okay. Do, don't now. This might be a really silly question, and I apologize. Doesn't Valero already have the ability with uh, some of his hooks and stuff to to do that today? So what Valero was missing um, was we didn't, and this is, this is pretty much missing throughout the stack, is we don't really have data path APIs. So Valero has the ability to, for example, call an execution hook and then do some stuff and then call another execution hook versus you know, packaging it such that there is an API that you say, hey, do the right thing. And what you're gonna do is kind of defined by you you know, so it's a little more of an object oriented thing. So volumes, for example, are a good example is we say to a volume, go snapshot yourself. And it goes, you know, the storage system goes, it does a bunch of work for us. We don't do that work. We don't, you know, reach down into the storage system and say, hey, these blocks are gonna get copied over here. Those blocks are gonna be over there. It's like, no, that's that's not what, what Valero needs to do. The API is is the contract there. And so the idea is that we can add other things in there as well that support this contract where we can say, hey, snapshot yourself. Hey, give me back a data stream to move or back up. <laughs> okay. 
I, I see. Um, so then that means that the literal user A who has something but doesn't have an astrolabe implementation of its APIs for that thing means that that user won't be able to use the data movement. Is that a fair no. understanding or not? Well, I mean, they're going to be able to use the data movement. So let's let's say we take Astro completely out and all we do is volume movement. So that's that's the situation we're in right now. Right, so if we don't have a mechanism for saying, hey, here's how we get the data stream out to move it. Well, all we can do at this point is volume snapshotting and volume movement. Well, uh, okay. I mean, I, I, don't I'm not... I, I don't know if I'm following because, like, can we also back up all the cube resources and everything else? Like, it's not just. So oh yeah, but that's all. What, that's what all other... happening anyway. That's continuing to happen, right? So we're mm -hmm. talking about extending the types of objects we can snapshot. Okay. So I, I guess I just I guess I'm just not following why that couldn't. That seems like some other thing. I, I guess I don't know. Maybe tying this to data movement is, I think, maybe where I'm getting confused because it sounds like the intention of this is something else, which is like making making it so that we can get snapshots of other things, and then moving that data is a separate thing, not tied to Astrolabe. If I'm Astrolabe gives you the I'm APIs following. so you can extract the data in a common way. So. Let's say, for example, we do an operator that's doing Postgres. And we add, you know, they have like backup APIs. Those tend to do things like push the data into their own format someplace. So once, once we've done that, so we, we can handle it one of two ways. So you can handle it like RDS, where everything is done under the covers. That's where we're currently at with volume snapshots. So we say to the to EBS, for example, we say snapshot of volume. EBS says, okay. And it comes back, it gives us a snapshot handle. But we don't have any paths right now for saying, okay, well, we want to move that snapshot from region A to region B. We want to take that snapshot, we want to pull it back on-prem and put it on my on-prem object store because I don't want to just leave it sitting in EBS. We don't have the well, ability to do what, that. So isn't that, that that's data movement, right? Well, and, there, and, and in order to do that, we need to have, for example, ways to move data. We need to have APIs right. and so forth. I agree. I agree. I guess I'm, I'm asking why is that tied to Astrolabe if Astrolabe is also about the name? Can we separate so, these two problems? So Astrolabe into two is separate the things? building block for the data mover. It's, it provides services to the data mover so that you can say, oh, I want to move this database snapshot that I took. And you don't have to write completely different code to do it. That all gets pushed down into the, um, into the Astrolabe protected entity. So that that provides you with an API that says, yes, I can read your data. I can copy that data someplace else. Okay. Make sense? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm just being dense. I, I'm, uh, I apologize. So, I, I well, can, so, I so, but, but go ahead. It's I mean, think good. about it for a moment. So say, <laughs> we, say we snapshot a database and we get a PG dump put somewhere. How do we move that data? Well, um, how I've been thinking about this problem, and I apologize, I don't, I don't actually know as much about Astrolabe as I wish I did. So uh, you may just be explaining something that I'm kind of restating here. I've been approaching this problem from like the CSI level, which is <clears throat> how, do, how do you perform, how do you take a generic CSI snapshot and then allow it to be like portable? And I wasn't necessarily thinking about it from the perspective of like, you know, APIs that a different type of application may support. I was only kind of focusing on the CSI level. Is that... Are you still thinking about it like that? Am I just misunderstanding it's, it? It's just one level up from that. So we take CSI as abstracting out volumes. It actually doesn't provide data paths at the moment, which is one of the problems. So yeah. like we wind up having to do like snap and clone and then attach in order to get things. So we need a data path. Now, if we've gone to the trouble, so what's the difference between a PVC and any other object? that it generally references some form of external storage. It, it, but it references something, but it, it has the ability to say we can snapshot it. 
if we're going to back something up, we have to be able to serialize it. So Astrolabe is just saying, look, if you provide an API that lets me say snapshot you and let me extract that serialized snapshot, then we can go ahead and put that into S3. We can copy it point to point. We can do whatever we want to it. And the format of the data doesn't really matter to us because we don't want to look inside the data. We don't look inside the volume data as it is. Um, we just want to be able to push bits from one point to another. Right. Yeah. So the pushing bits seems like the data movement problem. It is. Some how do you other get the thing bits? telling us what gets those, where those bits are and, and how to pull them, I think is a different problem. Separating well, how do you get the bits? Problem. How do you get the bits? Yes. Well, that isn't that like the definition of what the data mover interface should be? Give me the bits <clears throat> but, so I can move the Well, data. no, there's a top level thing. You say to the data mover, I want you to move something. How does it get well, the bits? Well, why? <laughs> so why? why? Why can't the data mover API be something different? Uh, why can't we separate these two things out? It seems so to me that there are two. So what would the data mover API be? Uh, probably in some sort of like sidecar or something like that. Like we already sure. have some some options here. Um, I'm asking the question. No, no, what, would, what would you be able to tell? What, what kind of verbs could you do with the data? Move? What kind of operations would you be able to do with the data? Move? I, I would assume that you would have, right, well, like, I would assume that you would have like move X to Y, right? Like, sure. So how do you like, move like X we would to use, Y? We would, we would have prop, well, wouldn't that be dependent on the backup vendor and, and how they're choosing to implement this? Well, you've got an X, which is a database of some form, right? Well, well, not necessarily. It's a serialized bunch of bits, right? I don't so care. So how do you get access to those serialized bunch of bits? Something. That's actually. Sure. And, and that makes total sense. Like, I, I, I think like that make, that's what I'm saying is that makes total sense as like a thing, but the movement of the data can we break that out of it? It is. That that's, we can. It's built on top of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's what Dave was. He's, he's saying that, like, essentially, the data mover from their perspective of what they're going to do with the vSphere plugin. Correct me if I'm wrong, David, but it's essentially Astrolabe providing that first section, which is getting the bits, and then the data movement is still its own API on top of it, right? That's right. And that's kind of how we were approaching the problem too. Um, Sean, am I misunderstanding something? Okay, that makes sense. My maybe I that's where I was saying I must I might be just being dense <laughs> earlier. So I apologize. Uh, but what I thought we were saying is like these two things are intro are linked together and they can't be broken apart. They and I was can saying, be broken why apart. I mean, you can you can do your own complete data mover. So if you implement the data mover API, but we need to be able to talk to the API in terms of things. We need to be able to say, I want you to move thing X. And so we have to be able to identify thing X. I don't disagree in any way. And I think like so that's- That was something that Astrolabe had was like object APIs or not yeah, object, object IDs so we could identify things. Isn't Astrolabe coming more from like a higher level perspective than the native cube resources right. here? That's where I'm getting a it little- sounds like, It sounds like to me what we need to do is define that data mover API in a way that can accommodate multiple things. And that's what I was suggesting when we say, when I said break it apart. It sounds like, in one hand, you're saying it can be broken apart, but then you're also saying, well, Astrolabe gives us all of these things that we need. Well, well we need to we have probably something. need to divide. Wait, hold, hold, hold on a second. Then we probably need to divide to design the data mover API in a way that can be used more extensively, right? So that other people can use that data movement, not just Astrolabe users, right? Is my point that I'm trying to make. You're saying Astrolabe does this, and I don't disagree with you. It does, and that's really really helpful. Um, what I'm saying is we probably need to expand the data movement to other things. And we probably want to design an API that allows us to do that. And so I, that's what I was trying to get out when I was saying break these two apart. It's not mm -hmm. say, actually it isn't giving us anything. I think it totally is. And I totally agree with you. I'm asking, can we break these two apart so that we can extend the data movement to something else that we might want to do? We might be able to. The question is, you know, we're going to have to define things like for example, how do you identify the object that you're moving? The, 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 this is where I feel like there's a disconnect because I'm coming at it from the angle of like, what's the native cube resource that you're trying to do, like deal with? And that's the PVC, right? The, that's, actually, that's the first one we're going to deal with. 
Right. Well, PVCs are just the tip of the iceberg, I think. But, but that's the only way to do this from a generalized perspective without locking us into like, I, I, I feel like Sean's hinting at the idea that if, if we go down this aspect of like using astrally protected entities as that source, you're, you're not really developing a general API that can be consumed by other vendors, right? I mean, the idea is that this is the general API that other vendors can go ahead and implement because there isn't an API right now. Okay. Well, uh, well, I love I don't the, see um, why CSI is not that, but that's okay. Yeah, that's CSI is only for volume. For later. CSI is only for volumes. It only works for disks. When you say it's only works for volumes, aren't we just talking about moving volumes? <laughs> I mean, that's well, that's just it. That's why I want to I want to start moving us up a level. So, think, so, so think about say Cassandra. Okay. Right. When you back up Cassandra, do you want to snap all the disks? You can, but that's not really the right way to do it. Sure. What you'd like to have is you'd like to say, hey, I'm going to do, I think it's Medu Medusa. I'm going to do a Medusa backup. But now how do I well, get that Medusa backup from A to B? You put it on a volume and snapshot it and you push no, the data let's somewhere. Not do and that. Then you... Let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's actually an interesting point um, because especially distributed database is actually a pretty good, that's a pretty good use case, Dave, of like where this, this needs to be rethought of slightly because you're right. Uh, to Sean's point, yes, you could do this thing where you dump it all to one individual volume. You do, so do Medusa backup, you dump it to a volume, you take a snapshot of that volume. Is that the correct way to do it? In, in the most efficient way? Probably not. Um, I mean, we, we wind up with a lot of extra steps. We have the same problems right now. We were talking about, for example, being able to use Valero to migrate uh, data from point A to point B. We currently can't do that. It's going to have to take a uh, step through the object store. So you got to do like a RESTIC backup into S3, then a RESTIC restore. So one of the things that we were doing with Astrolabe is you can simply say, I'm going to copy this disk from here to there. And it gives you the APIs to do that. Isn't that volume populating? Which is yes doing and no. data in cube? Yes and no, because volume populator, you'd have to, you, you still have to set up the data path. What's the data path for volume populator? So you can write. You, you, your you couldn't. You, the whole point of data populator would be that you would be able to add that data path, right? Right. So somebody has to build n data paths. So why don't we build one? Well, somebody and would have to build somebody. an API to be able to populate in that way. Sorry, I'm I'm getting into the weeds. I I think that what I'm trying to get at is that there are building blocks in Cube that are coming that do parts of this. Right. I think we, I, I, I am not necessary. I think that we should potentially think about this as a larger solution in the context of like Kubernetes and what's coming and like think about it. And my reason for breaking it up is that I think this is an important thing that needs to exist. I'm not convinced yet that all the other pieces that the larger solution that's being pitched was all tied together is necessarily should be part of that solution. But if we can break it up into itty bitty bits, then we can make progress on itty bitty things. Does that make sense? And so that we already have a lot of stuff. Drive those. So we have the data paths. Astrolabe has the data paths already. We've got an implementation for vSphere. We've got an implementation for EPS. So we can do things like direct volume access, direct snapshot access. Which is something we don't get yet with CSI. We can build on top of CSI. We have to build things alongside it. You know, Fong's doing work on the CBT stuff. That's not going to get in for a couple of years. We've got to implement it and prototype it somewhere, and then we start pushing it down the stack. So, um, well, I obviously know that Data Mover is going to be a very long conversation that we have to have. Dave, these are really good ideas that you clearly have a lot of experience. Like, we would love to have your input on kind of what we were doing coming at this from the pure. Cube yeah, and, and, and we um, have the existing data mover design that Bridget was working on, right? Yeah, and I saw that was closed, so I just don't know what the status of that is on your guys' end, um, but or I guess the VMware end, if that's who's continuing that along. But um, again, like we were coming at this from the angle of like, here's a CSI snapshot that has to get moved somewhere. From OpenShift storage perspective, that's desperately mm -hmm. needed. And it's actually a generalized problem in Kubernetes. Um, we designed a solution around that. 
I, I don't see why we couldn't enhance it to potentially support like these ideas that you're bringing up around, you know, generalizing. I think Cassandra is actually like a really interesting idea that didn't really hit me until now that I, that's like a really good use case of where this does fall short. Um, I think there's ways to work around it, but uh, the whole point being like, I would just love to get your input on kind of what we did come up with to solve it from like the pure CSI snapshot level. Um, and I'm sure we can have a good conversation on GitHub around this. Um, I, again, if there's someone else driving a design elsewhere, like we would love to work together and see it. It's just, I, it just seemed like the one that Bridget put forward is going stale. I don't know if there's anyone still continuing it, but we kind of, it's like a really high priority for us. So we've gone on the path of just making something work. Uh, and now we're trying to generalize it, get it more like for what Valero could consume. But clearly there's a lot of other people that have stake in this. So um, yeah, we're just looking for feedback. And I'll just note that um, I think this is a good discussion, but we're still missing at least two key stakeholders, one of which are the Beijing team who are, yeah. and Daniel who, uh, you know, who's driving a lot of this. And then also Xing from the plugin team, although uh, Dave is of course representing somewhat her views. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. All that to say is I think this is a really good discussion. I actually just paying the Beijing folk to make sure that they watch this uh, recording so that they're caught up on the discussion thus far. And um, maybe it's next community next week for the community meeting, or possibly, um, Dylan. I know that this is urgent for you, and frankly, we want to make sure the conversation continues. It's possible we should schedule a separate session if it's not if on Slack we're not kind of or on if it, if asynchronously we're not getting the discussion going. So all this to say is, I think we need more folks in the room to kind of complete um, perspectives. Yeah, that, that might be a good idea, only because it's like this is like the topic that you could schedule an hour call and it ends up going for two hours because of just how many things it deals with. Um, but I think from our end, all we would like to do is like, we're trying to just detail what we did prototype in a, in a generalized design. We'll get that submitted before we do meet and talk about this in a larger context. Mm -hmm. um, that way you just get an idea of where we were coming from. Clearly there's a lot of things that Dave brought up that I hadn't really considered and I would love to kind of get that perspective too. So um, yeah, I, I would love to have a much longer conversation on this. It's something we've been thinking about for a while. So. Well, you know what I think I'll do then? I think I will try to organize a, it'll be an evening North America so that Dave and the Beijing folk can attend. Um, so we'll try to, I'll reach out to you. We can find a time. We'll communicate it to the larger community for anyone else who wants to come, but it'll be data mover specific. I think we need that chat. And, and I can see how the, yeah, we should at least talk about it. If we can resolve things soon, great. If not, we'll figure out what to do. That sounds great. Yeah. I did have one other kind of question, it might be for Dave because it's vSphere specific. And so if it's long, we don't have to do it if it's not. Um, the question I had, or maybe it's two, and, and again, maybe you all already asked this and I didn't, or answered this and I didn't realize. One is, I know that Shing had said that vSphere data mover needs to be more specific than a more generic data mover. And I think you all, is that because the vSphere plugin uses, what is it, the VADP call? So it more efficiently accesses the snapshots compared to a more generic data mover or am I getting this wrong? I'm not sure what, what Ching said. So I, okay. um, <laughs> so right now the, um, the VADP stuff is all encapsulated inside a protected entity. So, gotcha. so that, you know, in my thinking, you know, when I was still at VMware, it was that that thing would continue to be maintained by the vSphere team um, because it's not really a Tanzu thing. Um, yeah. And am I right to think then that, the, okay, this VADP specific information, if a more generic data mover did call Astra, I mean, ignoring all the other stuff you said, and maybe this was all said and I just missed this. If the, if the uh, generic data mover, if a Valera data mover called that Astral protected entity, it gets access to the VADP specific stuff to make a really efficient data transfer. Is that correct? Yes, it's, that's all, that's all encapsulated in the currently, and that's, all built so that it's it's swappable. So there's all the VADP stuff is uh -huh. currently encapsulated in one section of the vSphere plugin. And, and is and the alternative an actual... and the alternative if someone isn't using Astrolabe is then they have to write code to directly use VADP. They have to have VADP knowledge and then they have to write the code that directly calls VADP. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. So that's what Caston has done, for example. Interesting. And, and actually this is where, you know, from my perspective, talking to customers, it's like, this is where a lot of backup vendors specialize in, right? Like this is, a, this is actually a sales pitch for their, for their solutions. We are coming at it from like a, what's the generic data mover thing that gets you the basic requirement here? And then there's a lot of, you know, 
world-class vendors that have specialized specifically in these problems to get you, you know, the best dedupe, the most efficient copying. Like, um, I don't know that we're going to be able to replicate that from like a Valero perspective. I don't know that's even. So working. when we originally were talking about data mover, we're talking, for example, with Veritas, who I don't think is represented today. Um, and one of the goals was to have the Valero data mover be something that was swappable. Okay. Um, and that you could, you know, swap it out for certain types of things. But we also wanted to get kind of the concept. So like, for example, like the, the disk stuff is pretty well, people have done a lot of stuff. Um, there's different levels of done, um, but there's a lot of stuff that's, that's available. Um, but the, the other stuff, like if we, we want to be able to say snapshot Cassandra or whatever, and start moving that around, that's not done, but we can make that available, you know, as a set of plugins. So like, that's another good reason for splitting Astrolabe from the data mover per se. So there's a Valero data mover, that's the generic one. There's a set of Astrolabe protected entities that also exist independently. If you are say, Kasten or Veritas, you may decide to implement your own data mover and do your own version of the disk stuff because <clears throat> you have disk stuff that works really well you have a backend repository that works really well, but then we can take advantage of the APIs for say Cassandra being generic and use them in our data mover without um, having to write Cassandra specific stuff, which is code that we do not have. <clears throat> I think you've answered my question, my first question. Dylan, you can <coughs> ask more on that if you want. My other thing is a bit of a change of topic, so. No, no, that's that's fine. I, I, I mean, I just have a lot to think about here. So I, I think a <laughs> separate call is gonna be great. Uh, that sounds great. Like uh, I'm just putting it in a NFS share. Um, this is again, gonna show my lack of knowledge. Uh, this is Vs for specific, but my understanding, I dare I say for Dylan, I'll ask you and anyone else here, lots of people care about vSphere besides just us Tanzu, right? I mean, my understanding is that there are non-Tanzu vSphere users out there for Valero. So is it okay if we talk about vSphere in general on this call? Well, here, I'll ask, I'll ask my question. If it's too uh, VMware specific, I'm happy to take it offline. Let's put it that way. Um, I have heard from, uh, in this case, it's a Tanzu customer, but I think it might be more general, asking, um, saying that they don't always have access to, I guess it's an S3 backend. I need to look at my email and that they are asking about whether Valero might support NFS shares. And is I don't this actually- a backup target, you mean? Yes, I don't understand. Unfortunately, this is where I'm, I would go to Dave in the old days, I would go to Dave and he'd explain to me what they're asking. Well, well this is exact, we've actually had the same ask um, from the Red Hat side. Uh, oh. So when we did a migration tool and Valero was the thing underneath it, it was very common that folks said, I don't have object storage. I have an NFS share. Can I just shove the data there? Right now, uh, I believe Nolan, maybe it wasn't Nolan, it was someone else. Didn't someone prototype a backup storage plugin for NFS? If I'm remembering this correctly? I'm not sure. Object store, an object store plugin. I mean, it wouldn't be hard because the amount of data stored in the object store plugin is pretty small. Yeah. It, um, I, I believe I can dig up a repo around it. I don't think it was very well maintained, but it wasn't super complicated. Um, I think it would be really cool if someone continued that work and brought it back into Valero. Absolutely. Interesting. If well, you could dig it up, that would be good. But actually, can I ask a question first? So first of all, why would people say that they don't have an object store? I mean, I can try asking this person, but can anyone help here help me understand? I thought it was really easy to set up MinIO or whatever. Because it's something you got to set up and you got to allocate space and, you know, somebody's got to maintain it. You've got to secure it, you know. It, okay. It, it's, so it's not that you can't, it's thing. that it's an ad. Okay. It's added thing. And what's an NFS store <laughs> or share? Uh, it's going to be a shared file system. So it acts like a file system, but you know, it's like, uh, you know, you use Windows file sharing, right? Sure, well, kind of, I have a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, is the point that with V, on V, and this is vSphere specific, is NFS share a vSphere specific thing or not? The yes and no. So um, I think the way they're trying to use it, it's not vSphere, vSphere specific. Okay, and actually, you know what? The email says nothing about vSphere, so maybe I got that part wrong. Um, okay, and so your point is that most people have an NFS sh share, 
that they could use instead of an object store. Or some people have that, and that's what they want to use instead. Some, some people have that. Um, I think we were getting the the request from the vCenter team that they wanted to use FTP. Also, some customers are using FTP, and it's like, oh no. Is FTP an NFS uh, share, or is it something? No, else? it's another protocol. It's an old, old, old okay. protocol that. Um, so one one thing when we were talking about using Copia, right? So Copia has the ability to sit on different backends. Object Store is one, but also putting it on top of a file system like NFS is completely doable. Oh, okay. So Copia could connect to an Object Store backend, or it can connect to an NFS share. And so you're saying no, but I thought that NFS was used for smaller files, and Object Stores were better for larger files. Is that Okay, I mean, not true. Okay. It, it's all in, in context of how much storage, yeah. right? I mean, you have 100 yeah. terabytes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, you can already use NFS as a PVC, you know, as a PV. And we, uh, um, right. the, the, so, so, so if your volume data is on NFS, we support that already through RESTIC. Uh, and I'm assuming Copia would as well. Um, but yeah, this is different because this is, this is a backup storage location, which is specific to right now S3 or Azure or, you know, that kind of thing. So. To be clear, too, they must be wanting to do it. They, you know, people who would want to do this would want to use it for the object store, either for saving RESTIC volumes or for the Kubernetes metadata, because it's the object store. We're not talking. Okay. Right. So I guess the point then. So thank you. Now I'm caught up knowledge wise. So what I'm hearing then, I mean, I guess the question was, is it something we've thought about? Uh, Dylan's point is, it sounds like possibly Nolan did something like this in the past. Dylan will dig it up. So I, I, okay. I shoved a link in the chat. It was he basically just. Did a demo of writing to a file system. It wasn't an NFS share specifically, but it could be easily expanded. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so but, these... that, oh. well, but but that's only for the object store plugin. So that's going to put the Valero data in there, but not anything else. Uh, yep, yeah. and Rustic too, right? Should should uh, Rustic doesn't sit on top of the object store plugin. So I'm not sure if we, we'd have to be able to configure Rustic hmm. to okay. do that. Interesting. Wait, what do you mean the Rustic does? Does Rustic, Rustic have its own way to access an object store different yes. than how the, well, okay. So, so, oh, so, 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 so it uses the, the backup storage location metadata, but yes. it doesn't use the object store plugin. Yes. That, got it. Right, because it's wait, Rustic. Wait. I mean, it, it already had all that stuff. Yeah. I'm just going to re-say this because I really want to make, okay. So the actual backup storage location, which points to the object store, that's shared between Rustic and the metadata, Kubernetes metadata, but the object store plugin is used for the Kubernetes metadata. Rustic has its own ways. That's right. I'm learning yeah. a lot today. Thank you. Um, okay, so cool. I can, I can send this to the person who's asking. And I guess more generally, it, it's a more general question. I, I had not been aware of these asks before. Is this some, so I'm hearing that for the for Valero, it might be a nice feature to add. Is there still actual immediate need from anyone here on the call or is it just something something nice, but depends on user need? So something nice it, with Minio available and like, you know, I'm sure other people supply different S3 compatible solutions. Like that, that's all we've ended up doing is just like bundling one of Red Hat's other S3 things and giving it to them. Um, and many is so easy to set up and maybe it's just making that documentation even simpler but it, it's not that complicated to me but to dave's point it is another thing to maintain so it, it, and it may be that the users that are asking for nfs haven't looked into many or haven't you know explore that option yeah that's possible too i think we had been resisting adding nfs as a target because it's just yet another thing and you know it it's like you know more work plus you know expands the, the testing matrix and um, it's going to be more support. So that was that was kind of why we were resisting doing it. That's really good. All this is really good background. Thank you. OK. Well, that answered, I think, all my questions. Unless anyone has anything to add, this has been really, really helpful for me. Thank you. Well, Orlin, I can hand it back to you. Uh, I don't know if anyone else. But I'll add yeah, I just want to share that I'm not the only one who is new to this call. Uh, we have some folks from CERN. So can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, yeah, uh, hi. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes. We can. Yeah, okay. Hi, uh, I'm Rajula. Uh, I work as an engineer at CERN. So we've been, uh, I don't have any slides to mention our use case. I can briefly tell you what, what we use, uh, how we use Valero. So uh, I work in a, a team that handles the websites at CERN, both public facing and the private websites. We have more than 1,500, 2,000 plus websites. 
and we run everything through operators. So we have customers as definitions, and and at CERN uh, uh, we uh, everything is self-hosted. So we have our own uh, data center. We uh, use uh, OpenStack instances, and then we use uh, the OKD, the open source version of OpenShift, and then we host all this uh, many thousands of websites. And uh, and Velero, uh, we use Velero in two different cases over here. Uh, uh, one is uh, it's our uh, cluster state backup by default in most of our clusters uh, that only stores the metadata, uh, and it's specific to uh, public facing websites like. Uh, like the home dot cern, the home page. So for these websites, uh, these are content management, like CMS websites. So they have also like data persistent volumes. So here we use uh, another instance of Valero to take uh, restrict backups, uh, pre hooks and post hooks. So we've been using for a while now, a uh, project is kind of stable at this point. And then we wanted to uh, see if we can contribute back uh, in our free time. So yeah, happy to be here. Well, we're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, you had a very good community meeting to join. You saw like a robust argue, you know, a good, good discussion and then some other things. So I'm really glad, uh, glad to have you. Thank you. And needless to say, oh, sorry, whoever else was speaking, go for it. Oh, I, was, I was about to ask if everyone else wants to share something or bring some other topics for discussion. I'll just merely finish. I, I I had cut myself off, and then uh, so yeah. So um, please feel free to keep coming to the community meetings, Rajula. And uh, as you said, if you all want to contribute, I mean, this is the place to start joining. And certainly, uh, I'm I'm the product manager, but uh, the engineers can also help uh, talk about where it might make sense to jump uh, jump in. So and and just so you know, a good number of our maintainers are in Beijing, so they're not here today, but uh, they'll watch this video and see your introduction. So. Yeah, thanks. I, I think uh, this time works for us because it's over evening here. So, yeah, thanks. Yes. <laughs>